Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. May is Celiac Awareness Month in Canada, and I'm pleased to rise and to wear my, my uh, ribbon here along with my colleagues today to help increase awareness of the daily challenges facing in terms with celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, which is estimated to affect 1 and 2 percent of our population. Celiac disease is a serious autoimmune disorder whose symptoms are triggered by gluten, which is a protein found in wheat, rye, barley, and other grains. People living with celiac disease cannot absorb protein, carbohydrates, fat, vitamins, or minerals, all of which are necessary for good health, Mr. Speaker. At present, there's no cure other than a lifelong gluten-free diet, and yet the prevalence is increasing and only 10 to 20 percent of cases are currently diagnosed. That is why it's important for us all, including our medical providers and health advocates, to continue to increase public awareness about the importance about the importance of early diagnosis of celiac disease. People need to be alert to some of the atypical signs of the disease, which can develop at any age, such as anemia, poor bone health, reproductive problems, elevated liver disease, and neurological symptoms. The average delay in diagnosis is 11 years due to the similar signs and symptoms of other disorders and conditions. The impact of delayed diagnosis can result in bone loss, iron deficiency, neurological disorders, liver problems, reproductive difficulties, and cancers of the stomach and esophagus. The executive director of the Canadian Celiac Association, Melissa Secord, a constituent of my colleague Ten Arnott from Halton Hills, encourages all individuals who suspect they have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity to speak with their doctors as soon as possible and be tested before any long-term health implications take effect. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today is International Workers' Day, or as some may know it, May Day. It is a day that is celebrated around the world in recognition of workers' rights. Workers will march through the streets in protest for better working conditions and fair wages. In my city of Hamilton, workers will gather and rally behind those who are on strike or those who are faced by CCAA. It is a day to recommit to the work that needs to be done, to ensure that workers are treated fairly in the workplace. On Saturday, I joined the Hamilton and District Labour Council and workers from across the city at the day of mourning ceremony. It was a rainy Saturday morning, but it did not stop the hundreds who attended and packed our city hall. Day of mourning is a solemn ceremony where we grieve for the dead and fight for the living. We heard directly from injured workers who fight daily to receive benefits that are needed through WSIB claims. Measures used such as deeming and medical overturns that strip injured workers of owed benefits. We heard from health care workers who face injury and assault as part of their daily routine. Speaker, I'm very proud to be part of a city with such a strong labour community that has made a huge contribution to our city and continues to fight for workers' rights. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, today is Doctors' Day, and it's an important day to highlight the important role that doctors play in our communities, whether it's in a doctor's office, in our local hospitals, in clinics, in our research labs, or in our homes. Doctors play an important role in our lives. For almost 20 years, I've worked with doctors to strengthen health care in the community I live in and across Ontario. Whether it was saving CHEO's cardiac unit, building a new regional cancer centre, or improving access to palliative and end-of-life care in Ontario, doctors have been a key part of the success in those collaborations. In my mandate for palliative and end-of-life care, I've, had, I've worked with doctors like Nahid Dasani, Darren Cargill, Andrew May, Jose Pereira. Their dedication to their patients and their families at a very vulnerable time is incredible, and there are many more like them. My family has had great doctors. Dr. Barry Adams, who is my pediatrician, as well as our children's, and there was a bit of overlap there with one, but that's a story for another day. And there's Dr. Tad Pierzanowski, my dad's dermatologist, who listened to him and took a genuine interest in him and his overall health and that made a big difference to my dad in the last five years of his life. We can't thank him enough. I also had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Nadia Lam last week at Spots for Docs. I'd like to congratulate her on assuming her role as president of the OMA, and I look forward to working with her and doctors to continuously improve our health care system. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, earlier today we raised the Dutch flag to celebrate Dutch Heritage Month. Coming from Holland, this month holds a special meaning for me. It's an opportunity to recognize the many contributions of Dutch Canadians. 
It's also a time to remember the powerful bonds of friendship that developed between the Dutch and Canadians during World War II. On May the 5th, the Netherlands celebrates Liberation Day and remembers those soldiers who put the freedom of a nation above their own lives. I still remember my mother's stories about liberation. The Canadian soldiers who freed Holland are the reason why my father brought his family to Canada and why the ties of friendship between Holland and Canada to this day. In 1945, the Netherlands Crown Princess Juliana presented Ottawa with 100,000 tulips to recognize the Canadian soldiers who liberated the Netherlands and as a thank you for providing sanctuary for her and her family during the war. The Tulip Festival, which is still held each year in the commemoration of liberation, is a great symbol of that lasting friendship. Thank you to the Council General Anne Lee Galiuk for joining us today and sharing in this recognition of Dutch heritage. I would also like to thank all those who came out to celebrate the rich history of the Netherlands and to work to keep the tradition alive. And to the veterans who allowed me to be born in, Hon in a liberated Holland, thank you, which of course means thank you. We will continue to honour your legacy. And also, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank you for being out there and bringing greetings on behalf of the province. Here, here, here. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Tomiskimi Cochrane. Dr. Well, Speaker. <laughs> well. Okay. Yesterday, or last week, Speaker, it was announced in uh, my writing through a press release out of Sudbury that we are getting at the Tomiskimi Lodge in Halebury is getting 46 new long-term care beds. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the Tomiskimi Lodge for all the work they've done to get those 46 long-term care beds. It's a big deal in our community. Would have been nice if actually it had been announced in our community. I would have been happy to do that on behalf of the government. I'd like to thank the government. It's public dollars. I would like to thank the government. But they didn't really have the courtesy to actually let anyone know in our riding that this was happening. And, and that's part of the issue with this government. But I'd also like, to, while we're talking about long-term care beds, like to mention the Northland Lodge in Inglehart. It's a degrade long-term care home. Mm -hmm. And one of the few left in Ontario. The community is working hard, working together to try and get this long-term care home, to get these beds revitalized, to make it the home it should be. The staff there are great, but the home itself, it's in, it's in, tough, it's in tough shape. And the community is working together. They're really happy for the Timiskaming Lodge, but this home needs to be looked at because these people, and I'd like to, uh, these people are worried. I'd like to thank Andy Poopor. He's the president of the Northland Pioneer Club sent us a letter last week talking about that, you know, in a place like Inglehart, as people get older, in their golden years, they don't want to have to have to travel miles and miles and miles to see their friends and their relatives in long-term care homes. So we're going to continue to work with the Northland Lodge to get them revitalized as well. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from England, the Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to speak on behalf of uh, farmers, and residents and decent people from uh, Niagara Escarpment to Niagara Wine Country to uh, the uh, King City area north of Toronto to the Northumberland Hills who are outraged by the announcement yesterday by the Conservative Party that they are going to sell off chunks of the green belt, chunks of the green belt to the biggest developers in Canada. People are outraged because people know this is grade one and grade two farmland. That's the only grade one and two farmland left in the GTA. They're going to give it away. It's also where our fresh water comes from, the headwaters of Duffins Creek, the Credit River, the Humber. They are going to give this away, pave it over, and reward their big development friends. This is wrong. The people in Niagara, the people in Northumberland, the people in North York, or the people all over southern Ontario say this is wrong. This is a secret backroom deal. We won't stand for it. Save, don't pave the green belt. Um, before we move on to the next statement, just a reminder, 
we're still in warnings. It never stops. Once it starts, it stops the next day. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to stand today and reflect upon the 41st Parliament. And um, it is an, always an honour to be able to stand on behalf of the amazing people in my riding of Huron Bruce and talk about things that are near and dear. You know, over the last number of years, we stood up and defended the tools that farmers need in terms of being best at what they do. We defend science-based decisions, and the whole issue that evolved around neonics was absolutely unacceptable. Another thing that was unacceptable over the last number of years is the manner in which the horse racing industry was decimated under this Liberal government. Another thing that I can't help that to reflect upon is the Green Energy Act, the jerking the municipalities around with promises of money only to take it away. Bill 148 actually is a, a huge worry that we hear. It doesn't matter whether you're a dentist, you're a manufacturer, or you're a small business. It's a worry for everyone. The cap-and-trade carbon tax, that, that's just making life more affordable in Ontario. The out-of-control executive compensation, the cooking of the books while the debt is out of control, and making life unaffordable, generally speaking. Those are just some of the things, but there have been really good things as well. We've encouraged young people to be engaged with Queen's Park, be at the OLIP program. I've had eight interns in the, over the last 10 years, the pages that have come from here yeah, in yeah. Bruce, and those who have also participated in Model Parliament. CWP has been a tremendous experience. Speaker, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you. That's a, that's a good way to get yourself an extra 10 seconds. I appreciate that. <laughs> The uh, member statements. The member from St. Catharines. One of the main reasons I decided to run for public office at the provincial level was to protect our valuable farmland, green fields, wetlands, ravines, rivers, streams, and environmentally sensitive areas from unwise and reckless development. When our well, uh, this is unorthodox that the speaker has to stand during statements. No, I, I don't like that either. Can I start again? Yep. Another clock, please. Let's try it again. One of the main reasons I decided to run for public office at the provincial level was to protect our valuable farmland, green fields, wetlands, ravines, rivers, streams, and environmentally sensitive areas from unwise and reckless development. When our government was elected to office in 2003, urban communities were sprawling at a dangerous rate, and tens of thousands of acres of precious land were being gobbled up for development. To counter this worrisome trend, our government created the largest permanent green belt anywhere in the world that protects almost two million acres of pristine land and fresh water. Unfortunately, in the Niagara region, because of land use decisions made in the 1970s, prime agricultural land with special soils and a unique microclimate conducive to the growing of tender fruit were paved over and lost to the greater good forever. People of all political persuasions have lauded this initiative and expressed support for the Green Belt and would be appalled and extremely concerned when they viewed a video of PC party leader Doug Ford promising developers to open up a big chunk of Ontario's Green Belt for development admitting that he had already talked to some of the biggest developers in the country. Most people would agree with Joni Mitchell, who implored us not to pave paradise to put up a parking lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it's a pleasure to be able uh, to rise today and make a few comments about Speaker Levac. Um, he is Ontario's longest serving speaker and has served in the role since 2011, having been elected twice. This illustrates the regard his fellow colleagues have for him. As members of the legislature, we place our trust in voting for the speaker as the one whose decisions will be final and respected. Being the speaker is not always easy. It requires a constant balance and firm approach to all decision-making. Speaker Levac provided that style of leadership. 
It has been a pleasure to serve as a deputy speaker with him. But his excellence and his reputation has gone beyond the uh, precinct here. A short while ago, I attended an event hosted by Robert Land Academy in celebration of Speaker Levac. Speaker Levac was winning the inaugural John Brandt Award. This is an award designed to recognize community leadership and the values of the Robert Land Academy. And these are loyalty, labor, commitment, courage, and honor. I wish Speaker Levac the very best in his retirement and thank him for his many contributions to Ontario. Thank you. I'd like to give her another minute and a half. <laughs> I had to say that to make sure I didn't get her quote, but coming from the longest serving female in Ontario's history. I, uh, I'm honored to have heard your words and uh, consider you not only a friend, but a very classy lady. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank all members for their statements, especially Julius. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that, but uh, it is now time for reports by committees. The member from Oxford.